Oumuamua. We are not alone in the universe. Scientists and stargazers alike share this belief. It feeds our wonder and allows us to imagine that our lives may have much more significant meaning than we had been led to believe. Maybe we're part of a greater intelligence that exists just beyond our reach. This idea is one of the most inspiring and debated throughout human history. The advancement of technology has allowed us to see and analyze things that at one time were thought impossible. Most people share a fascination with the stars, the idea of other inhabitable planets and the existence of alien life. It's a fascination that doesn't seem to extend to the greater scientific community, however. Unidentified objects have been observed in space for decades, and most scientists conclude that none of them have been the product of intelligent life. But why? Is it because modern scientific tools allow them to rule out the idea or is it because no one wants to alienate themselves from the community at large by making extraordinary claims? What if we have evidence that an extraterrestrial intelligence exists and modern scientists refuse to accept it? This is the story of Oumuamua. Is it an alien ship? On October 19, 2017, Canadian physicist Robert Werrick observed an object using the Pan-STARRS telescope at the Haleakala Observatory in Hawaii. It was 33 million kilometers, or 21 million miles, away from the Earth. For perspective, that's 85 times as far away as the Moon. It was already heading away from the Sun and out of our solar system. It was a small object, thought to be between 100 and 1,000 meters, or 300 and 3,000 feet long, and between 35 and 167 meters, or 115 and 548 feet thick and wide. There was no evidence of the object having a coma, an envelope of ice and dust that forms around the nucleus of a comet. It had a spin rate similar to observed asteroids, but models suggested that it was more elongated than all but a few natural bodies. Though it had no coma and the scientists could detect no off-gassing, they theorized it was a comet. And though no asteroid has ever been known to have a shape so extreme, others suggested it was an asteroid. Then, the idea that it was a shard of nitrogen or hydrogen gas was presented. Suppose it was a shard of nitrogen ice. In that case, it could explain why no off-gassing could be detected and why an object that size could survive in an interstellar medium for 500 million years. The premise that it could be a piece of exoplanet similar to Pluto became popular. Researchers also theorized that it could have been a piece of hydrogen ice formed from an interstellar molecular cloud. That could also explain why no off-gassing was detected. Named Oumuamua, Hawaiian for a messenger from afar arriving first, the interstellar visitor had stirred members of the scientific community and the details of its existence divided them into camps. The comet theory was proposed first. It was the easiest to arrive at since its behavior mimicked that of a disintegrated rogue comet. It was classified as Comet C-2017-U1. There were obvious issues with this claim. First, there was no off-gassing detected. Researchers tried to explain that by saying that enough outgassing may have increased the object's speed without detecting the gases. The Center for Near-Earth Object Studies, SNAOS, at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory published a paper claiming that the extra boost of speed the object received to escape solar gravity was likely, quote, caused by jets of gaseous material expelled from its surface, end quote and that maybe the cloud of dust particles surrounding it was too small to be detected, but enough to give it a little kick in speed. After reassessing that theory, scientists concluded that if outgassing were causing its propulsion, visible or not, the observed spin rate of Oumuamua wouldn't have been stable, and it would have been torn apart. The narrative then began to settle around the idea that it was an asteroid. Oumuamua was reclassified as asteroid A-2017-U1 and not a comet at all, due to the absence of a coma. After the very large telescope in Chile measured the object's orbit, color and brightness, the images were combined with those of four other large telescopes using four different filters. 
Similar to objects in the outer solar system, the effects of irradiation from cosmic rays over hundreds of millions of years made it red, and it was confirmed to have no trace of dust around it. The team of astronomers who studied the data found that Oumuamua varies in brightness by a factor of 10 as it spins on its axis every 7.3 hours. They also revealed that no discovered asteroid from our solar system varies so widely in brightness, with such a broad ratio between length and width. The most elongated objects they've seen to date are no more than three times longer than they are wide. The observations led research teams to declassify Oumuamua as an asteroid, suggesting that it behaves more like a comet, even though it was already ruled out as one. The identity of the unusual object traveling through the Milky Way, unattached to any system for hundreds of millions of years, was now in limbo. With the two easiest and most familiar classifications off the table, researchers needed a new classification. Oumuamua was given the classification I, interstellar object. Since it was the first to be discovered, it was officially classified as 1I, or 1I, 2017 U1. A second interstellar classification was given in August 2019 to a rogue comet, officially known as 2I Borisov, named after the astronomer who discovered it, Gennady Borisov. It was confirmed as a rogue comet since it had an easily identifiable coma surrounding its nucleus. So what about the theory that Oumuamua was a shard of nitrogen ice cast off as a chunk of an exoplanet? According to some researchers, it would explain the rocket effect of increasing its acceleration as it moved further from the sun. It's claimed it would also explain its unusual shape. As layers of nitrogen ice evaporated, the body's shape would have become more flattened, like a bar of soap. Oumuamua's brightness could also be explained under this theory, as its brightness was consistent with an albedo, the amount of light or radiation reflected by a surface, of 0.64, which is consistent with the albedo of the surface of Pluto, which is 98% nitrogen ice. So, is that it? According to respected professor of science and Harvard University astrophysicist Avi Loeb, Oumuamua can be ruled out as being a shard of nitrogen ice. Loeb and fellow Harvard astrophysicist Ari Siraj co-wrote a paper published in the journal New Astronomy. They explained that there isn't enough nitrogen in the universe to make an object like Oumuamua. Even if all the nitrogen ice in the universe were scraped off every Pluto-like planet that's theorized to exist, there still wouldn't be enough nitrogen, as it would exceed the mass of stars, requiring, at a minimum, more than 60 times the mass per star needed to make all the planets in our solar system. What about hydrogen? Is there agreement that it could be a splinter of hydrogen ice? A study in 2020 conducted after observations by the Spitzer Space Telescope suggested that if Oumuamua were a hydrogen iceberg, the pure hydrogen would have escaped detection as the cause for its acceleration. Loeb also doubts this could be the case, stating, the most likely place to make hydrogen icebergs is in the densest environments of the interstellar medium. These are giant molecular clouds, and that it would be too far away to make the journey as hydrogen would evaporate too quickly. So what does Loeb propose? He wrote in a paper, Oumuamua may be a fully operational probe sent intentionally to Earth's vicinity by an alien civilization, and that Oumuamua's acceleration could be derived from sunlight reflecting off a solar sail-like structure. Though many of his colleagues dismiss the idea outright, they can't, with any certainty, say what it is, or that he's wrong. Loeb maintains that if we're to discover great mysteries of the universe, a shift in focus and allocation of resources is needed to expand the minds of the math-centric observers of cosmic phenomena. In his book, he writes, one of the most difficult lessons to impart to young scientists is that the search for the truth can run counter to the search for consensus. Indeed, truth and consensus must never be conflated. Sadly, it is a lesson more easily understood by a student starting out in the field. From then on, year after year, the combined pressures of peers and job market prospects encourage the tendency to play it safe. 
Is Loeb right to suggest that Oumuamua may be a probe sent by an alien civilization, or is there a simpler explanation? I'm sure the debate will continue well into the future. Let me know in the comment section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe.